Okay, so now what we are going to do is we are going to discuss some expected topics for UPSC 2022. Okay, some important topics that are in news recently and they can be part of the examination. So let us just start discussing these topics. So the very first topic that we're going to discuss is National Marine Turtle Action Plan. Okay, so the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has released the Marine Megafauna Stranding Guidelines, right? A National Marine, marine Turtle Action Plan. So basically, if I talk about this action plan that has been released by the government, it contains various ways, right, to promote intersectoral action for the conservation. And it also aims to improve the coordination if I talk about, okay, so that the various bodies such as the government bodies, the civil society and all relevant stakeholders, okay. So all, all relevant stakeholders on main purpose is to generate the response to cases of stranding that are happening in tangible, okay, of marine mammals. And also the most important of all, the conservation of marine turtles, okay. So if I talk about five species of Indian turtle along with the IUCN status, they are as follow. Olive riddle turtle. So you need to remember these. Okay. So olive riddle, it's come into the category of vulnerable. Green turtle, endangered. Loggerhead, vulnerable. Hawksbill is critically endangered. Okay. So leather black back is vulnerable. So as per the statement that is released by ministry or ministry through PIB, so the document they highlight actions that are needed to take for handling stranded animals on shore okay the so stranded or entangled animals in the sea or on a boat so management actions for improved coordination okay are required and also the, for reducing threats to marine species in their habitat so what is there important is that the role of turtles okay so see uh, if i talk about sea turtles so sea turtles they have a very important role okay in food web right so they are very important in the food bed because they consume an assortment of prey so what are the preys that they uh, consume it includes your puffer fish and sponges and sea grasses and algae okay so basically they help in transportation of nutrients okay from the highly productive marine habitats if I talk about like sea, okay, the grass beds to energy poor habitats like those of sandy beaches, okay. So the green turtle, they feed on the sea grass beds and crop grass for providing the nursery for numerous fishes and shellfish, okay. So the if I talk about the leatherback turtle, so leatherback turtle, it keeps the jellyfishes on track and controls the importance of green turtle, leatherback turtle and if I talk about hawk's bill, okay, which is critically endangered, it feeds on sponges in the reef ecosystems and open up the crevices for other marine life. Okay, so if I talk about another important concept that can that can arise over here is the difference between a turtle and a tortoise. Okay, so tortoise, if I talk about, they have a rounded and dome shell. Okay, so they are different, which is thinner, and tortoise are more water dynamic than in turtles so the shell of the turtles are more streamlined to aid them in swimming one thing and one major difference uh, is that you know tortoise they spend most of their time in land whereas if i talk about turtle okay if i talk about turtle they spend more time in water so you can just for your knowledge keep this difference in mind because it is very very important so olive riddle turtles if i talk about specifically about them they come in the vulnerable category and they are the smallest smallest species of india okay and where they can be found they can be easily found sea turtles in lakshwadeep right plus andaman and nicobar islands andaman and nicobar island islands they can be found okay so if i talk about the uh, span that uh, what is a span so they live a long time they almost for 50 years yes so that time span is almost 50 years or more and and we can say that turtles sea turtles they have a similar lifespan to humans okay so you will find this one particular thing so out of the turtles the turtles which are found in india uh, you uh, it's olive riddle turtle then it is uh, 
then green turtle loggerhead and hawksbill and leatherback so you can remember these names so this is one of the topics that is of importance because uh, upsc keeps on asking certain kind of questions related to animals right so national marine turtle action plan in tasmania recently in news so you need to remember the species their categories and yes we just differentiated between turtles and tortoise the small small differences are there but yes they are of the great significance importance so another topic the second topic that we're going to discuss up today is the green hydrogen policy this is also a very important topic for, uh, topic from the exam point of view if i talk about so uh, newspapers recently it said that the ministry of power okay it has announced a green hydrogen policy definitely this green hydrogen policy is important and industry participants you will see that they have largely welcomed it for it fits in well with the climate action thrust of india's budget for 2022 and 23 okay and so this policy it has you know uh, set a target what is the target of 5 million tons per annum okay so 5 million tons per annum target has been set up for green hydrogen production that to by year 2018 30 okay so by the year 2030 so more than 80% of what the current hydrogen demand in the country is okay so it is a we can say a watershed movement uh, in india's energy transition journey okay so by doing this india has become the 18th country in the world to release a comprehensive green hydrogen policy i am repeating it's the 18th country okay not the first one so ammonia and hydrogen they are basically they are being seen as the future fuels to replace the fossil fuels so government uh, under this policy is offering to set up manufacturing zones right and for production and uh, connectivity to the interstate transmission system on a priority basis and free transmission for 25 years if the production facility is commissioned before june 2025 so government is basically trying to you know make this green hydrogen policy a success and what does it mean it means that the green hydrogen producers will be able to set up solar power plant right solar power plant in rajasthan and solar power plant will be set up where in rajasthan okay so that it can supply renewable energy to green hydrogen plant in assam setting up it in rajasthan for supplying the renewable energy to green hydrogen plant in assam okay and um, it would not be required to pay any interstate transmission charges also okay so also not only does the producers will be allowed to set up bunkers near ports of shop storage okay of green ammonia for export by shipping so manufacturers of green hydrogen and ammonia they are they are allowed under this too so that they can purchase the renewable power okay and they can purchase it from the power exchange or they can set up the renewable energy capacity re capacity right themselves they can uh, set up this capacity or through any other developer anywhere that they want to do it and also uh, it provides the facility for the producers okay to bank any surplus renewable energy generated with the swaps okay up to 30 days and use it as per the requirement so now just let us discuss that what is the significance of this policy so green hydrogen policy let us just discuss it So yes, uh, India's largest oil refiner, Indian Oil Corporation, has estimated that GHP measures will reduce the cost of green hydrogen by around 40 to 50 percent. Okay, and uh, fuels like green hydrogen and green ammonia are very vital, very important for any nation's environmentally sustainable energy security. So green hydrogen and green ammonia. Okay, these are the words that you'll keep on hearing in newspapers, and so you know, this should be part of your notes, right? important topic so india has already committed for achieving this net zero carbon emissions by the year 2070 okay and we are in currently in 2022 so india plans to achieve that net zero carbon emission by 2070 okay and uh, green hydrogen is seen uh, will be seen as playing a very significant role as a disruptive feedback in india's transition from oil and coal if i talk currently currently also the dependence on oil and coal is very very high okay so the ghp 
lays a solid foundation for developing a competitive green hydrogen sector in India. Okay, but with this, there are certain challenges also. Okay, so what are the challenges that are, there is charge on transmission? There is less cost effective than green, lesser cost effective than green hydrogen. One uh, second challenge. There's also something called gray hydrogen. Okay, so green hydrogen, if I talk about it, will be made at a cost of about rupees 500 per kg. Okay, which is nearly almost 3.5 times the cost of gray hydrogen. So the landed cost of uh, uh, RE from a distant source will need at least be half okay, to make green hydrogen competitive. We have is the gray one. So there is also reluctance of states. You will see many public sector electri uh, electricity utilizers are unwilling to let go of their monopoly in power distribution. The other uh, limitation is that lesser margins for producers. This is one and unwillingness of industry. So bringing such a change is not easy it would require a certain time and commitment so here the role of state government role of central government and demand generation becomes very very important that's can be part of the way forward mm -hmm. and incentivizing the in, uh, industries so this was the the topic that we have discussed for green hydrogen policy another topic uh, that is very very important it is mrna vaccines okay so let us just discuss about this particular topic so india's mrna based covid 19 vaccine candidate has received additional government funding for its clinical studies okay so the mrna stands for what it stands for messenger rna right so messenger rna or mrna technology so what is this technology all about it is um, it works by teaching our cells right to recognize and protect us against the infectious diseases so one of the challenges with this new technology is that it must be kept cold okay so this is one important thing it must be kept cold to maintain stability during the transportation and the storage process okay so basically what are mrna vaccines they trick the body into producing some of the viral proteins okay so viral proteins itself so they work by using mrna or messenger rna okay uh, which is the molecule that essentially puts dna instructions into action so inside a cell mrna is used as a template to build a protein so how uh, all these things work so basically uh, to produce a mrna vaccine scientists produced a synthetic version of the mrna okay that a virus uses to build its infectious proteins so this mrna then it is delivered into the human bodies whose cell read it as instructions to build that viral protein okay and therefore create some of the virus molecule themselves so these proteins if i talk about they are solitary in nature and so they do not resemble to form a virus the immune system okay so the immune system then is going to detect these viral protein and then will start to produce a defensive response to them so uh, the novel mrna vaccine candidate hgco19 it has been developed by pune based biotechnology company genova pharmaceuticals limited and it's in with collaboration with hdt biotech corporation USA, right? So, HGCO19 has already demonstrated uh, safety, mutagenicity, neutralization, antibody activity in the rodent was already tested, and now on human primate models. So, uh, Genova has is initiated the enrollment of volunteers for the other phase clinical trial for its vaccine candidate. Okay, if I talk about the significance, okay, the significance of these vaccine uh, is also very important. So, there are two parts or of our immune system what are they one is the innate one is the innate part right and the other part is the acquired part so two part are there innate and acquired so innate means uh, the defenses that we are born with okay natural something that is natural acquired is one that which we have uh, developed as we come into contact with the pathogens okay so i'm talking about the immune system so a uh, classical vaccine molecules they usually only work with the acquired immune system and the innate immune system is activated by the another ingredient called an adjuvant what do we call it as adjuvant right so uh, interestingly uh, if i talk about mrna in vaccines they could also trigger this 
innate immune system so providing an extra layer of defense or an extra shield we can say without the need to act so this is what it is so for prelims that uh, the thing that is to remember is regarding vaccines how the vaccine work working of the immune system what is mrna and potential applications of mrna vaccines okay so for uh, for prelims perspective for on this particular topic you can remember all these things so another important topic is the gigantic river dolphin so recently a gigantic dolphin was beaten to death in Pratapgarh of Uttar Pradesh. Okay? So this is important from the exam's point of view. So let's just talk about gigantic river dolphin. So you need to remember the scientific name also Platensta Gigantica. And uh, the Ganges River dolphin was officially discovered in 1801. Okay. So, uh, killing the gigantic river dolphin is a punishable offense if I talk about in the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. And Ganges river dolphins uh, live in the Ganges Brahmaputra, okay, Meghna and Karanpuli Sangu river system of Nepal, India and Bangladesh. Please remember this. Nepal, India and Bangladesh. Okay. So, the Ganges river dolphin can only in, live in fresh water very important and they are essentially brine so they hunt by emitting ultrasonic sounds which bounces off fish and other prey enabling them to see an image in their mind so they are also called susu so population of uh, gigantic river dolphins if i talk currently it's around 1200 to around uh, 1800 so what is the uh, significance okay so significance of gigantic river dolphin is that it is a reliable indicator of the health of the entire river ecosystem okay and uh, national uh, the, sorry the gigantic river dolphin it is was recognized as national aquatic animal in the year 2009 by government of india so there are various threats by catch uh, is also one of the threats to it pollution dams and uh, let's just talk about the conservation status so in the indian wildlife protection act of 1972 it comes under the schedule one and in the iucn category it is uh, categorized as endangered okay and in sites it's come uh, it's come under the appendix one that is most dangerous on convention on migrated species it is part of appendix two so you need to remember this also appendix one appendix two is related to what's appendix two if i talk about convention on migratory species so migratory species that need conservation and management or would significantly benefit from international cooperation are part of it okay what are the steps that have been taken by the government so one is your project dolphin and uh, the other is your dolphin sanctuary and this dolphin sanctuary is where it is in bihar mm -hmm. right remember it where it is it is in Bihar and uh, also uh, there is a celebration of National Ganga River Dolphin Day okay so it's uh, celebrated celebrated on 5th of October so this is the basic information that you can remember uh, from this particular topic gigantic river dolphin another important topic is the Mekha Datu Dam it has been in news for over a year now and the concerns associated with the Tamil Nadu and the Karnataka. So Tamil Nadu over here is the lower riparian state, right? And uh, Karnataka is the upper riparian state. So recently, the Supreme Court, uh, the Karnataka government has decided to challenge before the NGT its decision to appoint a joint committee. So let us just discuss what is this Meka Datu project. So basically, the Meka Datu project is around 9,000 rupees, 9,000 crore project, okay? And the basic aim is to store and supply water for drinking purposes for the Bangalore city. So it was approved in the year 2017 by the Karnataka state government. And it also received approval from the erstwhile Ministry of Water Resources for the detailed project report. And uh, the response was awaited from Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Now, why the approval of Ministry of Environment and Forest Change and Climate is important? Because 63% of the forest area of the Kaveri Wildlife Century will be submerged by this project. Okay. So in 2018, uh, Tamil Nadu, it actually approached Supreme Court against the project. So even if Karnataka held it, it would not 
affect the flow of water to Tamil Nadu. So during uh, if I, uh, in the year 2020, so Kaveri during the Kaveri Water Management Authority meeting, Tamil Nadu reiterated its opposition to the protest and said that it is not right. Okay, being a lower riparian state, Tamil Nadu had certain concerns associated with the project. Okay, so Tamil Nadu is opposed for any kind of project that is being proposed in the upper riparian unless it was approved by the Supreme Court. Okay, so Karnataka, according to Tamil Nadu, has no right to construct any reservoir on interstate river without the consent of the lower riparian state, and the lower riparian state over here is Tamil Nadu. Okay, so uh, the Kaveri Water Dispute Tribunal and the Supreme Court they have found that the existing storage facilities in the Kaveri Basin, right were adequate for storing and distributing water. So Karnataka's proposals on the face of it is untenable and should be rejected outright. From exam's point of view, you can remember the uh, River Kaveri, right? So uh, about River Kaveri also you can remember. So River Kaveri is also known as Puni in Tamil and also as Ganga of the South. Okay? And it's the fourth largest, fourth largest river of Southern India. So it is a very sacred river. And where it rises, it rises in the Brahma Giri Hills, okay, and in Western Ghats. So definitely, if the cons uh, the topic is in news, so you need to remember the news associated with it, important issues. And uh, Kaveri it flows in the southeast direction to the states of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, okay. And then finally, it descends in the Eastern Ghats in a series of great falls and drains into Bay of Bengal through Pondicherry. So some of its tributaries, uh, the name of the tributaries you can remember. So it's Arkavati, then Hemavati, then Lakshmana and Shimsha, Kabeni and Harangi. Okay, they are all they are all the tributaries okay, of Kaveri. So whenever you are studying this topic, do remember to remember the river Kaveri, its location because it's a disputed area. So map work is very, very important for this particular project. So it can be a good question in the geography section to be asked for it or it can be asked in the current affairs section. Thank you.